The situation in China continues to unfold and it just took a turn for the worse. You came here for the truth. Today I want to have my focus on China. I want you to see what's happening. I think it is very important. I've been covering this issue extensively and now it has taken a step further. The first thing of course I want to cover is specifically what's going on with China, with Evergrande and the property sector. The second thing we are going to talk about is inflation's grip. This is of course correlated because everything the central banks are doing, whether it is the People's Bank of China or the Federal Reserve, it's all going to impact you. And the third thing is coal for Christmas. Did you ever think you'd be asking for coal in your stocking? Well, we'll talk about that and so much more. Let's begin. So this is the first article of the day and Bloomberg really highlights what's happening. I want to dig into this one first. Evergrande moves toward restructuring as debt deadline looms. Developer says it will actively engage with creditors. Chinese authorities try to head off concerns about contagion. It is a little too late for the contagion factor, of course, as I will show you here and have shown you extensively in previous videos. China's Evergrande long-awaited debt restructuring may finally be at hand. And you see the government trying to rein in the country's financial excesses without derailing economic growth. This is a very fine line they are walking. Already the property sector has taken a hit. I've shown you the charts basically showing us that nobody's really buying right now because they're concerned. They don't know if the house is going to be bought tomorrow, if the house is going to be produced tomorrow because, of course, of what's happening. The embattled developer said in exchange filing late on Friday that it plans to actively engage with offshore creditors on a restructuring plan offering its most explicit acknowledgement yet that is $300 billion. I want to I want to put out the highlighter on this one. $300 billion of overseas and local liabilities have become unsustainable. $300 billion of overseas and local liabilities have become unsustainable. This is massive. Unsustainable meaning they can't pay it back. And what is this? What is this restructuring? Well, if we follow what has happened previously in Europe as a good example, 2011 into 2012, we saw a lot of this, okay? I have it all documented on the channel. But essentially what we're looking at is a time period in which these countries, or in this case, this company, cannot pay back what they owe. So they essentially go back to those creditors and say, look, we can't pay you $300 billion. We're going to pay you $50 billion, $100 billion, whatever the situation is. And then they have to go back and forth to the table and agree to some terms. Now, why would they do that? It's simply a matter of, do you want this to be orderly or you, do you want it to be messy? Essentially, do you want us to not pay anything or do you want to get some back? And we've heard about this before, not just with this particular company, but how many times this type of thing has occurred. They don't pay back the full amount. A barrage of statements from Chinese regulators, several of which landed just minutes after Evergrande's announcement, suggested authorities are striving to contain the fallout on homeowners, the financial system, and the broader economy rather than orchestrate a bailout. You see what's happening? It is a lot different, at least outsider perspective, a lot different than what we've seen in, let's say, 2008. The government in the southern province where Evergrande is based summoned the founder to express concern over the company's announcement and said it would dispatch a team, not, that's not a good sign by the way, to the developer to ensure normal operations. The People's Bank of China blamed Evergrande's problems on the company's poor management and reckless expansion. So here you can see that. I believe I pulled this one up. Yes, braced for restructuring. Evergrande's unit, units, dollar bonds have long been in distress territory. Yes, it has been this way. It's kind of bouncing around. And of course, it is not very good. Not very good, right? What about the stock itself? On the left-hand side, you are seeing the daily chart, and it is under two right now. I've been covering this. It's been bouncing around. If I pull this back a little while here, you can see the trajectory has just been down, 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 and then it bounced back up. So it, you know, it ended up at around 
228 or so and bounce back up to you know almost a dollar higher a significant drop and i was seeing some comments saying everything is fine now china is coming in and bailing them out that hasn't happened that hasn't happened yet they are of course putting their hand in there they're trying to make sure that this gets dealt with they're not just ignoring it but it's not a 2008 style bailout it is very different anyway and now after bouncing around a bit it's at the lowest it's been in a very very long time technically you can look at this and some traders might want to play around with it but you know holding a stick of dynamite not a wise move so you can see here that restructuring looms ties up on deadline evergrande updates this bloomberg article gets into it and guess what another developer which i've covered before having problems all right kaiser group holding faces a potential default this week in major tests of china's ability to limit the fallout from the embattled property sector many companies in fact the whole property sector has been smashed and slammed down i've shown you many examples of this does it mean it's all going to fail tomorrow well you know, you can put your money where your mouth is if you believe that this is going to turn around. These stocks have gotten absolutely hammered. Evergrande said that it plans to actively engage. You heard about that already. Kaiza, meanwhile, failed to win bondholder approval for a debt swap, putting the firm on a course for a default unless it can reach a last minute agreement with creditors. You see that? Didn't work out the way that they had hoped. And so you can see here, Evergrande shares plunging 12% to an 11-year low. Look at the junk. Uh, bond yields going crazy. And why? Because there's risk. Whatever there's risk, you're going to see those yields getting higher and higher and higher. And there it is. Just zoomed in on that. Repeat Chinese defaulter, Sunshine 100, misses another payment. So how many different examples of this do we have to see? The whole point is that there's contagion in the system. There is massive contagion, in fact, in the property sector, but that goes on out. It's not just that. What about the banks and the financial institutions that are involved with this company? We haven't heard anything about that. Just, just small tidbits. And all the U.S. banks are involved to a small degree, but it's still not insignificant it still matters okay so they talk about how they are unable to pay the bonds and so on i actually based on my study have highlighted that we're worse off in the next year like it's it's actually quite small compared to the big deal in 2022 so i don't know how they're going to pay all this seems like they'll try to deal with it but one of those things has been that the suggestion uh, will be to reduce their reserve ratio requirement so essentially how much money the banks have to hold they can decrease that to then allow the banks to go out there and lend more money so you have a problem what do you do you just throw gasoline on a fire okay says uh i i don't think that's a good idea but you know and i i, I present this to you to ask questions Okay, China's Africa policy is evolving. Can the West follow? The West's excessive focus on African debt has blinded it to China's widening engagement in the region of 1.4 billion consumers. You've seen what China has done, not just to Africa, but they have certainly expanded their dealings, their infrastructure, their partnerships, their agreements in Africa. Some have suggested that they are doing this in order to take over they are trying to actively manipulate but i pose that question to you what do you think let me know in the comments below is china actively attempting to take over essentially to put africa different countries in africa in a you know a situation where they can't pay back their bills they can't pay back their debt and as a result, you know, they are indebted to China permanently and something has to happen. Let me know in the comments below. Exxon plans below inflation to U.S. pay raises despite a banner year. If you have seen inflation affecting you 
personally. Let me know. Click that thumbs up button. By clicking that button, I'm going to look at those likes and I'm going to see if this is higher than normal and I will know that you are being affected by it. Of course, at the same time, helps the algorithm. So that helps out. As always, I have heard from people all over the world telling me about what has happened with inflation in their personal circumstances. Food, energy being the top two. And this goes in with this article, essentially saying, yeah, they're going to pay them, what was it, 3%, 3.6% of a raise. But when inflation is 6% or 8% or 10%, it's not paying that. Now, they don't necessarily have to pay anything if they don't want to. They're a private company. But right now, there's a situation where trying very hard to keep employees, they have to do what they can. And then we have this article here. Powell's fight against inflation is already working. It if it's the e- if it's this easy for the Fed to contain rising prices, then Congress should rest easy about spending more. A little bit of nonsense here in this article out of Bloomberg, and you know, <laughs> I was gonna do a rant about this, and I, I think you know where I'm going. It's so ridiculous to suggest that they can ever contain it. It can't be contained. I was watching a bit of a video from somebody today that was concerned about what's happening in the stock market, but essentially said, I'm going to be buying the dip. And that might actually be the case, because if you look, um, you know, we we can just look at this here, S&P 500, look at Dow. I mean, technically, everything is oversold. So there might actually be a dip buy for a short period of time and perhaps into the Santa Claus rally. The the situation here that's going on in the news that might be overblown. Technically, we're oversold on many different indicators. It's not flashing, you know, obvious buy, but many will probably get in. Futures, as I record this, are up significantly. But the point here is that you know we look at the information we have at hand, and sometimes it just doesn't. It just doesn't add up. Anyway, no more ranting. Last thing, coal for Christmas. What do you think? Would you want some coal in your stocking? Well, U.S. coal is making a transitory comeback. I love the use of that word they have in this article out of oilprice.com. U.S. coal miners who have already benefited from rising demand from utilities this year are in for at least another year of strong sales and cash flow. The inventory is depleted and they need more. So over this winter, you're going to be needing that energy. Coal is set to do very well. Now the prices, you know, you never know because there's a lot of speculation and there's derivatives and there's futures and so on. But the demand is certainly there. We know that. Much higher natural gas prices are making more power generators switch to coal because they're saying if if this energy is expensive and that energy is expensive, well, (laughs) Maybe I'm just going to go with coal. And that's what's happening today. Okay. And, um, I, you know, I will end it there. All I'm going to say is if you appreciate the information, simply hit that thumbs up button when you do, you're supporting me. And also at the same time, you notify a whole bunch of people out there who don't know anything about this channel. It helps the algorithm to notify them. I do appreciate that very much. And if you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. So just click it and I'll see you there.